This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine, and today we are asking Professor Allison Simmons about her work with Crohn's disease. Hi, Allison. Hello. So what is Crohn's disease? Uh, Crohn's is an inflammatory bowel disease that affects one in a thousand um, of the Western populations, um, and it's thought to result from a breakdown in immune tolerance to intestinal microbes um, in people with a given genetic background, and that leads to um, inflammatory lesions developing in the gastrointestinal mucosa, um, which results in symptoms of bloody diarrhoea, abdominal pain and weight loss. And some patients respond to conventional immunotherapies like steroid quite well, and they go on to have a fairly um, trouble-free disease. Whereas others um, have really intractable problems um, and fail all the conventional immunotherapies, and, and these patients often end up with multiple ha- needing to have multiple operations. Um, so you know there's an unmet need there. So what is the role of the innate immune system in Crohn's disease? Over the last ten years, um, there's been a lot of um, genetic research which has unearthed various um, genetic variants that lead to development of the disease. And amongst the most strongly associated genes are um, genes falling into the category of innate immune system genes. So the innate immune system is the most primitive arm of the um, human immune system. It's composed of um, a series of receptors known as pattern recognition receptors. Uh, And these receptors um, recognise conserved molecular motifs on microbes, and they they perform a task of being gate, gatekeepers, essentially, of the immune system. They recognise these conserved motifs and decide whether to amount a full-blown immune response or not. Um, and um, there is a particular innate immune receptor, pattern recognition receptor, associated with Crohn's disease called NOD2. So we've worked on the function of NOD2. We've shown that it functions normally to get rid of intracellular bacteria. That's its normal function. It, it does so by um, a process known as autophagy, uh, where the bugs are engulfed in a, a membrane and then degraded. Um, and we found that this um, pathway involves a number of um, other Crohn's susceptibility genes. Um, and in Crohn's disease, this process um, goes wrong. So more recently, um, we've mapped this signalling cascade in some, some much more fine detail. Um, and this has shown that not only um, does the signalling cascade often not to control bacterial destruction, but a whole load of another um, innate immune functions of NOD2. And again, these are defective in Crohn's patients. So this really adds weight to the idea that in some patients with Crohn's disease, their problem is one of an immunodeficiency rather than of an autoimmune disease as such. Um, And uh, so at the moment, we're trying to work on understanding the specific uh, molecules in that pathway that could be used for um, uh, structure-based drug design, essentially. Can your research help us understand other diseases? Well, NOD2, its normal role of NOD2 is in um, defence against intracellular bacteria, such as um, bacteria that cause tuberculosis, um, leprosy, um, salmonella disease, and so forth. And so understanding the wiring of NOD2 signalling has relevance um, for understanding how these bugs are cleared normally and how they may manipulate the immune system to give a more pathogenic disease when people are infected with them. So you know, understanding that wiring in those contexts can give avenues for better therapies for those diseases, but also for better vaccines. Um, the other side of this is that our work on the types of techniques that we use to understand innate immune receptor function um, in other immune receptors aside from NOD2 um, it can be important in, in other diseases where these, these molecules are, um, have aberrant function. So they, they have been linked to inflammation in other contexts, such as inflammation-induced cancer, for example, or inflammation pathology associated with chronic viral infections. So you know, we use the same techniques to explore other innate immune function uh, as well as NOD2. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five to ten years? For Crohn's disease, um, the really, I think, uncovering the genetic basis of the disease, um, so the advances in sequencing technology that have really revealed um, numerous Crohn's susceptibility genes um, is one. Um, Secondly, the same advances in sequencing technology have now enabled us to really address the composition of the microbes of the gut 
which drive inflammation in people with given genetic defects. So that, that's really early days at the moment, but um, these technologies will unleash a whole load of information on this um, in the near future. And I think the third thing which is really critical is that we've been able to build on these genetic advances to really understand the function of the genes that are uh, dysregulated and how they drive inflammation. Um, so that's you know, an illustrated, it was illustrated by our own work with Nord2, for example. Why does your line of research matter, and why should we put money into it? By defining the um, signaling cascade um, coming off Nod2 in molecular detail, we can define um, targets uh, for drug design for patients who have defects in that signaling cascade. Um, and this is really important for diseases such as Crohn's, where um, conventional immunotherapies may not work in a significant subset of patients. Um, that information can also be used to stratify the disease. So that means to identify subsets of patients where um, particular defects exist that would be amenable for specific th therapeutic approaches, um, so that also that they wouldn't have to have um, other immunotherapies that are not going to work needlessly. How does your research fit into the translational medicine aspect within the department? So we have a major um, program of translational research in collaboration with the members of the Target Discovery Institute um, here in Oxford. Um, so this involves uh, uh, using the high-throughput flat platforms to define molecules that will be um, candidates for structure-based drug design. Um, through my clinical work in the Translational Gastroenterology Unit, we have a number of, seri a seri a number of clinical trials um, initiated or about to be initiated in collaboration with various pharmaceutical companies. Um, we also have translational programs of work exploring the function of various innate immune receptors across um, various inflammatory contexts, and this involves collaborations with people at the Kennedy Institute of Rheumatology, the Wellcome Trust Centre um, for Human Genetics, the Human Immunology Unit, um, and uh, the, the Vaccine Centre, um, and the, the International Centre for Translational Immunology. Thank you, Alison.